Hello, my name is Justin Gaub, and I'm an Associate Professor of Otolaryngology at Columbia University in New York. And today I'll be talking to you about endoscopic ear anatomy. Let me just share my screen. All right, so let us get started. First, I just want to acknowledge how excited I am to be here. The first uh, endoscopic course that I ever went to, the first time I ever learned about endoscopic ear surgery was actually at this course around seven years ago when Aleo Rivas was the course director. And I'd like to thank him for his instruction then and Dr. Taufik for inviting me today. It's just truly an, an honor to be here, really exciting. So here's an overview of the talk. We'll start out with some background discussion and then I'll march through anatomy of the middle ear by a compartment. So let's start out with some background. Now as an opening lecture for the day, uh, I'm sorry to present you with a slightly dry anatomy talk. Some might consider a anatomy talk to be kind of like watching paint dry and I understand that, but I will try to make it as instructional as, and as interesting as I can. So one thing I just wanna mention upfront, um, so every single um, anatomic image that I show you will be with this orientation, uh, a right ear with superior to your left, inferior to your right, anterior in front and posterior in the back. I, I think this is important because uh, for beginners at least, when you read anatomy textbooks and it's constantly switching between left ear and right ear, I find that very confusing. Once you already know the anatomy, it's, it's good to be able to, in your mind, switch between left and right, but it's, it's not good for beginners and when you're introducing new, new areas. So it will be consistent here. Um, just a little background on endoscopic ear surgery, and this will be reviewed in other lectures today for sure. Um, what is unique about the endoscopic view and, and how is the anatomic view different? Uh, well, one key thing is that with the microscope, the widest field of view you get is defined by the narrowest point of the ear canal. So you get this fairly narrow view of the middle ear. Here's the middle ear uh, space right here. This is sort of the floor of the middle ear, the promontory area. You get a very narrow view. With the endoscope, the optic will pass that point of constriction in the ear canal and you get this wide angle because of the, the lens, it's a wide angle lens in comparison to the microscope, wide angle view. And you could just see much wider expansive area in the middle ear. And as a result, you can see more anatomy at once. So it's, in my opinion, easier to learn anatomy with the endoscope because you kind of see everything rather than a straw view through one section. Um, so here's a comparison of a microscopic view of the eardrum compared to an endoscopic view. This is a paper from Michael Cohen. So the, the metallic here is the speculum, which constricts your view further. Um, and what you see is an eardrum with a little perforation. And here's the endoscopic view. And you could see the endoscopic view is just much wider. The white circle is the microscopic view superposed over the endoscopic view. Just a nice wider view. You could see the whole annulus. You could see the entire handle of the malleus. You could see the entire perforation. So now here's a schematic of the middle ear and its neighboring structures. And the black oval represents the annulus. And the point here is that a lot of the important anatomy is not directly deep to the eardrum. So you need angled optics and you need endoscopes to be able to see everything. So the black circle is even more than you could see with the microscope, but the dotted arrow is potentially what you could see with the endoscope with some curetting. You just get a wider view. Notice most of the acicular mass is not directly in view. Um, below the annulus or eardrum. It's actually superior in the epitympanum. So if you wanna see that, you would need either an endoscope or substantial, substantial curetting with the microscope. Theme is endoscope lets you see what the microscope tries to see, but with far less bone removal and effort. So here's a schematic of the middle ear compartments. Uh, I like to think of it with this simple shape, a box with a circle in it and some diagonals, okay? So straight in the middle, you have the mesotympanum. What is the mesotympanum? The mesotympanum is what you see directly deep to the eardrum, okay? Meso is kind of like middle, mesotympanum. Tympanum means middle ear. It actually doesn't mean eardrum. Tympanum means um, uh, middle ear. The tympanic membrane is the membrane over the middle ear. Superior to this is the epitympanum, which contains most of the acicular mass. Anteriorly is the protympanum, which contains the eustachian tube. Inferiorly is the hypotympanum, which doesn't contain much, contains a jugular bulb. And then posterior, posteriorly is the retrotympanum, which is the kind of most complicated spot. And we'll walk through the anatomy there. 
So now we're just going to march through compartment by compartment for the rest of the talk. And I hope this will be a nice organized overview. So let's start off with the mesotympanum. Again, everything is a right here. Superior is always going to be to your left. Inferior is always going to be to your right. Anterior is always going to be in front. Posterior is always going to be to the back. This is a schematic view of the um, eardrum with uh, neighboring structures. And so the black circle represents the annulus. The mesotympanum is what you see directly under the eardrum or through the annulus. You could see the manubrium or handle of the malleus here, the umbo, cone of light, which is otolaryngotis we never talk about. You could see the incus and the stapes. You could see the promontory and then the round window uh, niche here. These are all the kind of like key landmarks that should be easy to see. So now let's lift the eardrum. Um, eardrum is lifted and this is, if you were actually doing a surgery, this is what you would see. This is not a cadaveric anatomic image. This is a live surgery image from a nice video from Brandon, Brandon Isaacson on his YouTube channel, which I encourage everyone to check out. So what do we see here? So again, right ear, so superiors to your left. First thing that's obvious is the promontory. Can't miss it, this huge bulge here. What is the promontory? It's part of the inner ear basal turn of the cochlea. And then the round window niche is inferiorly, it's this little cave here. We don't actually really see the round window membrane unless we were to drill a teeny bit or remove some um, adhesions. And then we start to see some ossicles. We see the incus here and the malleus. The incus um, and the malleus are initially parallel. It's the, it's the handle of the malleus. And this goes into the lenticular process of the incus, which then connects to the stapes. You don't really see the stapes as you would Think about it in an anatomy book because you're typically viewing it initially like a bird looking down on it. So you just see the head, but you don't see the crur. This doesn't look anything like a stapes, but, but it is. What you do see initially is the stapedius tendon, which is connecting. Also, you can see the corda tympani nerve over here. And then you see this airspace called the isthmus. This is important for what we sort of consider to be functional endoscopic ear surgery. Isthmus is the key ventilation pathway between the middle between the mesotympanum and the epitympanum. So this isthmus gets blocked, often uh, it's the only ventilation route, then the epitympanum is gonna get retracted, um, the tympanic membrane will get retracted and that's how you develop a cholesteatoma. This is a slightly more detailed view of the incus and malleus. Now the eardrum has been cut off of the malleus and umbo, this is now cadaveric image. We can see a few extra things here, um, including the tensor tympani, which connects to the neck of the malleus. We can see the isthmus again. We can see the corda in more detail. And now we can start to see the stapes uh, anterior crus, posterior crus here, and the foot plate. Okay, this is still the promontory. We also see the facial nerve, which is this pinkish structure, always directly superior to the stapes. So if you find the stapes, you can find the nerve. Finding the stapes and finding the, and the nerve in the middle ear, are like the two critical things you must do in every tympanoplasty, so you know not to injure those spots. Uh, this is a more posterior view gained with some curetting. Uh, and now the incus is removed. So we see the stapes, again, like a bird over it. You could see the capitulum. You can kind of see the anterior cruise and posterior cruise here. Here's the stapedius tendon, which comes from the pyramidal eminence. Facial nerve, very obvious. Look how thick it is. You can't miss the facial nerve. It's beefy. It's thicker than the, than the stapes is. And then posteriorly, you'd need quite a bit of curating to see this, but you can see basically what would become the facial recess if you had uh, drilled it through a mastodectomy. Uh, now let's go on to the epitympanum, the superior compartment. So now we're looking with an angled endoscope superiorly. Just to review, we see the stapes again a little more clearly because probably the endoscope's angled. You could see clearly the anterior cruise, posterior cruise, foot plate. Here's the stapes head or capitulum and then the stapedius which connects to it. Uh, here's the malleus again. Again, we see the tensor tympani which connects to the malleus neck. And now, now, if you look superior, you're peering into the epitympanum. You see the anterior epitympanic space here and the posterior epitympanic space here. Now, this is cool. You can see the lateral canal with endoscopes. You, you, I've never seen a lateral canal with a microscope unless we were to do a canal wall down through the, through the um, middle ear. So here's the lateral canal. And if we uh, cut the uh, TM off of the malleus and then cure it more, we can see even more detail of the ocicular mass. This is this is now cadaveric, not in, in situ, in uh, humans. So we see uh, incus over here, malleus over here is the corda tympani nerve going in between. You could see the, malle uh, the incus head here, the short process of the incus, which is what you see when you do a mastodectomy pointing at you. It looks kind of like a nose pointing posteriorly. It's covered by little bones. We don't quite see that. Um, Prusak space, 
is basically the space between the ossicles in the epitympanum and the eardrum. So this dotted line is Prusak space, which is uh, exposed by having curated the sputum in this image. Another key thing I like to always think about is that the malleus and the incus are two parallel lines. When you first get in the middle ear, if there's a lot of adhesions, you may see like this kind of structure and you won't know whether it's the malleus or the incus. You can ultimately figure it out by figuring out how anterior or posterior you are. One helpful landmark is the corda tympani. Corda tympani will always go lateral to the incus, but medial to the malleus. With even more curating, we can see into the mastoid. Here are some mastoid air cells. This is the antrum here, lateral canal. Um, I should mention for context that the incus has been removed. So we see the malleus and the stapes. The incus is now gone. We can see the corda tympani nerve here. Again, the facial nerve beautiful view of the lateral canal here. And then if we look even more super posteriorly, here we've removed the malleus and the incus, we can, we can basically see into the mastoid through a middle ear view, which is just tremendous. Here is the lateral canal, facial nerve. This is the cochleariform process, which attaches to the uh, tensor tympani, which then attaches to the malleus neck. The malleus and the tensor tympani have obviously been removed. Um, here's the second genu of the facial nerve, which would go into the mastoid and course now vertically like this. Again, this is the tympanic facial nerve. And this is the first genu of the facial nerve, which would then go deep into the, into the um, screen. Now, here's another important relationship I want to illustrate. The lateral canal facial nerve and stapes, those form a series of parallel lines. That is very important because perhaps the most important thing you must always identify in otology is the facial nerve. And the facial nerve is easy to identify in the middle ear because it's sandwiched between two very obvious structures, namely the horizontal canal and the stapes. If you can find any of these three things, you can find the others. They're literally parallel lines, horizontal canal, facial nerve, and the stapes. All right, now let's go to the retro tympanum, which is the most complicated space. Um, there are these kind of hidden structures in the retro tympanum that are somewhat scary to residents or fellows. And, and part of the reason why they're scary and frustrating is because you don't really ever see them with the microscope. I don't think I, I ever saw this as a resident and maybe saw it as a fellow with a canal wall down and deeply angling the patient towards me. But with the endoscope, you can see these things readily. And so it's more important to be fluid in their anatomy because you'll be seeing them and, and may want to mention them in op reports. So the, the, key, the key, what should I say? Keystone structure here is the round window, okay? Round window, round window niche, I should say, is very obvious. It's a niche in the promontory. You, you can't miss it. It's usually the first thing you see upon raising the eardrum. So that's gonna be your keystone structure. And then there are these series of ridges and we'll mark from superior to inferior. The superior most ridge we call the ponticulus and then the next ridge is the subiculum. The subiculum comes right out of the superior part of the round window overhang. And then there's this structure called the funiculus, which is sort of a newly coined structure for endoscopic ear surgery, since we always see it. Again, three ridges going from superior to inferior. They're the ponticulus, subiculum, and the funiculus. Now, between these ridges, we have spaces. Sinus tympani is the space between the ponticulus and the subiculum. And then the subtympanic sinus is the space between the subiculum and the funiculus. So this is also kind of something we talk about more with endoscopic ear surgery, the subtympanic sinus. You may not see it as much in classical literature. Uh, now we're gonna go through this in a um, dissection specimen. So here's our round window overhang here. We know it's the round window because it's like an overhang over this cave uh, right by the promontory. For reference, here's the um, the incus, uh, the stapes, this is the stapedius tendon. So we're looking really posterior, a little curetting needed to be done. The ponticulus is the superior ridge here. And then the subiculum is a little more inferior. Here's a round window overhang. So it's kind of the superior part of the overhang. And then the funiculus comes out of the inferior part of the overhang. And then here are our spaces, sub, sub, uh, sorry, the sinus tympani between the ponticulus and the subiculum. And then the subtympanic sinus between the subiculum and the funiculus. Sub Subtympanic sinus is just posterior to the round window niche. So it's pretty straightforward to see. Now let's do that again. Here's our stapes here. This looks like a stapes, right? Here's our promontory. Here's the round window niche. 
Here's the incus lenticular process. Here's the stapedius. Here's the pyramidal eminence. These are all the structures you should identify readily once you're somewhat familiar with the anatomy. Now, the ponticulus is this little ridge here, kind of by the pyramidal eminence. See that? This little ridge here. And then the subiculum is kind of an extension of the superior overhang. It's very obvious. Between the two is the sinus tympani. Pretty straightforward, I think, once you know how to identify it. Let's look again. Now this is going more posterior. Again, for reference, promontory, stapes. This really looks like a stapes, capitulum, um, stapedius tendon coming out of the pyramidal eminence. Where's the ponticulus here? It's really obvious. It's right over here. Oops, right over here. This is the subiculum here, right over here. Subiculum comes out of the superior part of the round window overhang. And here is our sinus tympani, very obvious over here. Uh, now let's talk about the hypotympanum, the inferior most space. Hypotympanum doesn't have as much interesting stuff. So in this picture here, the hypotympanum would be just here. It's just the inferior part of the middle ear. Here's the funiculus. So it's what's inferior to the funiculus. How do we know this is the funiculus? Because this is the round window niche. And remember I said the round window niche overhangs, they separate into the subiculum and the funiculus. Funiculus is the border of the hypotympanum. Um, in the hypotympanum, we have kind of two important things. One is air cells, and often there's a prominent hypotympanic air cell, which can look like the round window niche if you're disoriented and you could potentially put a cochlear implant electrode in that if you don't want to. And then the jugular bulb, which is kind of visible here, it has a little bit of a bluish tinge, and it's variable how superior the jugular bulb is and how obvious. Uh, just marching backwards for reference, this is, of course, the stapes and the incus going into the stapes. This is the stapedius tendon. Uh, and the blue is the jugular bulb. Now let's talk about the protympanum. Protympanum, really the only important thing is the eustachian tube. So here's the eustachian tube orifice. Um, within the opening of the orifice, we can often see the carotid artery impression here. And then we could see the tensor tympani muscle. Uh, now let's take some more global pictures of all of the middle ear, take those in. So this is with some curetting to expose a lot of the middle ear, including some of the epitympanum, protympanum, retrotympanum, hypotympanum, all in one shot. So the eardrum has been degloved off the malleus. For reference, this is the incus, the malleus. Here's the umbo. Here's the promontory here. Here's the round window niche. So starting posteriorly, we see the, the pyramidal eminence going into the stapedius tendon, connecting to the neck of the stapes. Here's the incus. Um, we can see the facial nerve here directly superior to the stapes. Remember the stapes facial nerve, and then the horizontal canal are three parallel lines. You see a teeny bit of the horizontal canal right here. Um, we, we don't see the corda tympani that has been cut already. Here's the malleus uh, with the umbo. Um, here's the neck of the malleus. Um, the tensor tympani muscle attaches to the malleus neck. We can see the tensor tympani coming now anterior. Important point, the facial nerve looks kind of like the tensor tympani muscle canal, but they're different. The facial nerve will stop. And then if you go more anterior, you'll be looking at the tensor tympani muscle. Here's the, uh, here's the um, eustachian tube orifice, which is a cave anteriorly in the protympanum. The internal carotid artery will be in the inferior part of that. Um, here are hypotympanic air cells. If you're seeing air cells in the middle ear, you're probably lost in the hypotympanum. Um, you can see the funiculus, which is the inferior extension of the round window overhang. And then you can see the ponticulus, which is right over here. Sinus tympani would be right here, basically, between the, um, I'm sorry, this is the subiculum, my mistake. Subiculum is the superior extent of the round window niche. The ponticulus, you don't really see well. I guess it's this here. Um, the sinus tympani is between the two. Um, here's with ossicles removed, except the stapes and a ca cadaver. So let's just go through some key structures. Round window niche here. Superior extent is the subiculum, inferior extent is the funiculus, posterior to that is the subtympanic sinus. Um, stapes here, stapedius tendon coming out of the pyramidal eminence. Here's the facial nerve, super obvious, and the horizontal canal. So again, our three parallel lines are horizontal canal, facial nerve, stapes. The cochleariform process is here. This comes up and forms the tensor tympani, which attaches to the malleus neck. Uh, this is the station tube orifice with the carotid artery impression here. Um, here's a hypotypanic air cell. And that about, I think, does it for our tour of the middle ear. Thanks for your attention. Truly an honor to be part of the course. 
I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. If you love today, uh, allow me to plug our Columbia Endoscopic course, which proudly follows in the Vanderbilt course's footsteps. This will be June 9th to 11th, your day is the 11th, and you can visit our website. Thank you very much.